Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Katia with Lunar Sun Creations and today we are going to be creating some really cool backgrounds using acrylic paint and tinfoil. Alright, so first step, get those gloves on, we're gonna get messy. <laughs> I'm just using um, some uh, acrylic paint from Amsterdam. We've got the deep gold. A red, which is called a carmine, deep olive green, blue violet, cobalt blue, brilliant blue, purple, this is the only one that's Crafter's Square instead of Amsterdam. A greenish blue and titanium white I don't show it but I also use a deep yellow and a black in certain uh, uh, bits and pieces all right so um, the cardstock I'm using is just a really plain it's just an 80 pound cardstock um, nothing fancy about it so I'm just putting down some splashes of the gold to start off And then I'm going in with some of that purple. You can use whatever acrylic paint you like. There's no uh, specific reason that I'm using Amsterdam, just that it's it's readily available in my uh, um, art supply store here. And then this is some of the blue violet. Now I'm just taking a piece of crinkled up tin foil and just kind of uh, smushing it onto the paint and moving it around. Um, I realized uh, right away that I didn't have quite enough paint so I'm, I'm using a little bit of water to kind of uh, make the paint go a little further uh, and then I also come in and add a bit more paint in a moment. Here's where I realized I didn't have quite enough paint to cover because I really wanted I wanted to cover most of the white space with paint and get a lot of texture happening um, and then I add some more gold and I'm kind of going in almost a stripe kind of pattern so you will see me kind of um, alter uh, the which part of the tinfoil I'm using because um, I didn't want the purple to completely take over the gold, so I find a new patch of tinfoil that didn't have purple all over it, and then go in with the gold there. And it creates it's a it, it creates like a really cool texture. There's quite a bit of paint. Like I I let all of these um, pieces dry for a couple days before I use them. But doesn't that look cool? I was really happy with the way that turned out. I think it looks pretty awesome. I did do a few more of those as well, but I just showed the purple and gold one. I just showed one of each technique. And then here I'm crumpling up a piece of tinfoil again, but then I'm um, kind of opening it and almost flattening it, but not quite. And then I'm taking a piece of cardstock and off camera there, I've got some of the titanium white um, with just a little bit of water, um, probably about half water, half white paint, just so it's um, quite thin, just so the paint had somewhere a little bit moved a little easier. Um, that that uh, brush had a little bit of paint left in it from another another background that I'd done, but I knew I was covering this, so I wasn't too overly concerned. So this is some of the brilliant blue. And then here's where I come in with some of the yellow 
um, that I didn't actually show at the very beginning, but it's just a deep yellow. And I just used those two colors. And my goal with this one was to kind of, I wanted it to look almost like uh, confetti. And I think it, I think it, it worked out pretty well. It got a little bit muddy. You want to use colors that work well together because they are going to really combine. So you don't want to uh, use colors that are going to create mud. Even this got a little iffy. <laughs> I mean, it was creating green, but it got a little bit more jumbled than I had intended. I wanted it to be a little bit more defined, but it was all right. And then I decided to just take a piece. I didn't want to waste the tin foil, so I just took a piece of that, and then I'm folding it up into a really tight. Um, I don't know, like a, a little swatch of, I'm just trying to make a, a very, um, I mean, you can even use a credit card for this technique or a piece of chipboard, but I'm using a piece of tin foil and I'm going to do little sweeping motions to create some texture that way. You'll see in a second. Um, ignore what's on the cardstock right now. I had thought about doing something else with the tinfoil and then it wasn't really working so I abandoned ship and tried this instead. <laughs> So some of the brilliant blue, the yellow, and that red color. And then I'm literally taking my piece of tinfoil and just doing like quick little flick kind of motions. I realize that I'm doing the flicking motion as I'm doing this voiceover, but you can't see that. So <laughs> just watch the video. Just do what I'm doing there. And again, with this technique, it's really easy to create mud. So make sure you have colors that work well together. That's kind of why I went with the primary colors. Adding a bit more paint here. And this technique, the paint becomes quite thick. So you'll really have to let it dry. And I should have kind of flipped over my tin foil when I started to combine colors too much. So it's good to have the fresh tin foil and you're not like whatever is on there already isn't transferring down to the next little space. So it did get a little bit muddy, especially on that right hand side. Um, but I, I, it actually turned out quite cool and I really, really like it. I do go over a couple spots. I realize there's a couple spots that have an, uh, a really large excess of paint. So I kind of took just a tiny bit off on some of the parts that had like a ridiculous amount of paint. And here I'm showing one of the same techniques um, using blues. This one is a, this is a few days later and it's already dry. So I'm going to use this one to create some cards. Um, I've cut some of that background into what is supposed to be waves. Um, I'm using some Gina K Connect glue just to put it down onto my card base. Uh, my card base is, uh, what is it? Four and three, four and, four and a quarter by about five and a half. It's a very traditional sized card base. Four and three quarters, five and a half, I think that's it. I should have measured that before I started doing this voiceover. You can use whatever card base you like though. <laughs> whatever size card you like. So that I'm um, kind of I wanted to make it quite dimensional, so that one's going popping up on pot on uh, some foam tape. And then I put that one just straight down and then the next one goes on foam tape. And then I've got these uh, cute little fishies. Um, they are from uh, an Impression Obsession stamp set. There it is there. 
And in retrospect, um, uh, so I colored them with my Spectrum Noir markers, but the markers didn't, the, the ink that I used to stamp them kind of bled a little bit as I was coloring them. Um, so I'm not super happy with the way they're colored. Uh, next time I will maybe heat emboss the stamped image first and then color them in and I think that might work better because I wasn't really happy see how the ink kind of bled and it's not a very clear I'm not a very good color to begin with um, then I use the just keep swimming another impression obsession stamp and then I also used some little dots from um, a scrapbook diaries stamp set it's a very old one I think Gabriel Polauco? I think that was her name. I think she designed it. Um, and I stamped them in Memento Ink Bahama Blue. So for another card, I used um, uh, Distress Oxide in... Uh, oh shoot, which color was this? I'll show it again in a second. Tumble glass. Okay, so distress oxide tumble glass. Just create the entire background um, using my my uh, domed blender there. And then this is a Chow Bella stencil, a really beautiful seaweed stencil. I did use a little bit of pixie spray on the back of this stencil. Um, but I'm not quite sure if I didn't use enough of it, but um, it didn't really stick very well. Um, so I'm not quite sure why that was the case, but I found that it was moving a lot even though I'd used pixie spray, so I'm going to have to try that again. Uh, so now I'm going over with uh, the Mode Lawn Distress Ink. I thought that was a really nice contrast with the uh, tumble glass. I love these foamed, uh, the foam daubers. So uh, they they blend a lot better than the um, the old flat ones. I really like the domed ones. So it turned out pretty good, even though the stencil was moving around a little bit. And now I've cut out um, that same. Uh, textured piece that we were just working with. I've just cut out a circle using a stitched circle um, die set. And I'm popping that up on some foam tape. And then I'm using a Picket Fence Studios Nautilus shell scene stamp and again my coloring skills are horrendous and I'm not happy with how this turned out. I've recently bought myself a adult coloring book so I am going to practice my coloring skills folks so they will be better next time. They're pretty sad right now I know. Um, I haven't got the hang of the whole blending situation yet so please don't judge me. I will, I will get better I promise. So I didn't like how I, I put one piece of um, foam tape underneath the bottom there just so it was the same uh, height as the blue circle there. All right, and I just left that one as is. I was going to put a sentiment, but I decided that I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to try that whole thing again with a better coloring. Um, here's a couple more of the backgrounds that I did. That one was one of the smooshing. Um, uh, this was one of the pouncing ones that I showed at the very beginning. And this is also a pouncing one. That first one with the purple was where I put the uh, paint on the tinfoil itself and then flipped the tinfoil over and uh, matted and did it that way. Um, here are some of the other cards that I made. I really like these ones. This is with a Pretty Pink Posh um, Hugs Shaker die. So I embossed that in purple a couple times. 
and then with a gold cardstock uh, in behind it. Simple but super effective. Um, here's a couple that I did with that confetti one. Um, really, again, really simple, but I think they turned out quite cool. And I used the uh, Letter It clear stamp set from Ranger. So I used that Hello and the Get Well. And then here's that really intense uh, primary color background. You can see how thick the paint is. It's really cool. Used um, uh, my favorite things Dynamics dye on that one. And it is uh, the large, what is it? Linked octagonal. Linked octagon frames. Linked octagon frames, that's what it's called. And then the Just Breathe is from another set. I forgot uh, to grab that one out. And then I did a second one, um, cut out some hearts and the Love Dye. And for some reason, my white embossing powder had a bunch of stuff in it, so it kind of went all funky. Um, this is another um, background. I'm just showing you that this is another one where I did put the paint on the tin foil and flipped it over and pressed it down. Um, so I used up all of this background and did a couple different sta uh, styles with it. Um, so I used a, what is it, a Julie Hickey Happy Birthday stamp. Um, it has a, a die cut as well. Um, I'm not super happy with the way these ones turned out. I like the background, but I don't like what I did with the cards. Um, this one is a little messy with the embossing down at the bottom. I feel like those cards I rushed a little and I'm not really fond of the end result. Um, but I mean, you know, you're in different headspaces every time you craft and some of the cards I absolutely love. I love the hugs. I love the just breathe. Um, and then other ones I'm not as fond of, but it's, uh, card making is a relatively new thing to me, so I'm learning as I go, and, you know, you're not gonna love everything you do, but it's a, a learning experience, you know, it's, that's how you figure out what you like and what you don't like, is by making mistakes. <laughs> so keep trying. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and learned anything. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Big hugs. Bye.